Anyway, ladies and gents, let's shuffle on uh, to this, which I think is funny. The Marvel oh, takes oh, no. another blow. And this is from the IMAX CEO, essentially detailing why the Marvels is not a threat to Dune and why Dune will not move. And that the Marvels is no competition for anything, basically. It's just a slam dunk on the Marvels. So obviously, with loads of rumors circulating that things are going to be moving. One of them was, of course, um, you know, Dune Part 2. And this came in like an IMAX earnings call. So it's pretty much there. Like, it's really interesting. Um, so IMAX earnings call. Uh, uh, Wells Fargo analyst Omar Majayas inquired to IMAX CEO Richard Gelfond. It says, what's the likelihood of this happening? Dune Part 2 moving. And if so, what other options are you considering for the replacement for the June slot? Now, this parrots a lot of what we've said before, by the way, and it's an interesting element from the sort of industry side of things. There's another great movie coming out around in time, which is The Marvels from Marvel. And we can't play it because we're committed to Dune. So Dune moves, that slot will just go over to The Marvels and having a Marvel movie as a backup is not the worst position to be in in the world. But in terms of Dune, my own opinion is that it's highly unlikely to move and it's an educated opinion, meaning I've spent a lot of time on the facts. I love that part. I love that part. So he says further, uh, Dune is already in the midst of a marketing campaign. There are trailers out. There's lots of materials out. They had a big presentation, a lot of conferences. And as a matter of fact, Denis Villeneuve presented at the IMAX CEO forum. So it's kind of out of the gate. So if you put it back into the gate, you've got to duplicate those expenses uh, at some time in the future of putting it out of the gate, which is what we've said before, why things get delayed, cost more money. In addition, Dune has a very long runtime in IMAX, up to five or six weeks. And, and this is the slam dunk on the Marvels, by the way, because it's coming out at the same time. Check this part out. And it was just fortuitous that there were no other conflicting projects. But if Warner Brothers Discovery were to move that to next year in some time, it's highly unlikely that Dune would have that amount of runtime. And wait, 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 we'll get into it. And just to remind you, IMAX was about 20% of the growth of Dune Part 1. And I know there's lots of marketing plan on the Dune Part 2. If they move Dune Part 2, there's a carrying cost. I uh, call it 10% or whatever it is. So how are they going to make up that cost? Really important element to their release pattern. And wait, we're getting there. So when I look at it from Warner Brothers Discovery point of view, from a dollars and cents numbers perspective, it just doesn't make any sense to me that they would move it. The only reason they would move it is they'd say the actor strike is going on and they want to get a premiere and put it on the Tonight Show or wherever they put the actors. But with no disrespect to Timothy Chalamet, uh, are you going to be able to make up for the losing six weeks in IMAX release? Are you going to make up for the cost of capital and carrying it over a year? Are you going to move it to an uncertain year when you have no idea what's going to be put against you when they have virtually no competition? in the marketplace. So obviously that's the slam dunk on the Marvels. Uh, when you look at the other movies, I think that's one of the most compelling not to move. Basically, the Marvels is absolutely no competition for Dune Part 2. And it's not. This comes from the oh, IMAX no. CEO. But the other interesting element of this, which I think is, is genuinely interesting, is the amount of money that they note here, right? So people often... The other thing here about the Marvels as a whole is that they are losing out on IMAX profit, which is a lot. IMAX was 20% of Dune Part 1. 20%. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money mm. because it's, it, you know, it's a high dollar value, high uh, value screens. Everyone wants IMAX. That's why Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible being bumped out of IMAX is not a good, good thing because Oppenheimer took its place. It's not good. So, yeah, IMAX CEO committed to Dune part, part 2 because they think that's where the money is. The Marvels, this is a massive black mark against the Marvels' potential profit. Potential that movie's going to make no profit. No profit. Yeah, I know, I know. Being the <laughs> optimal word there. But what do we think? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm still curious to see... I, I mean, if I know there's been rumors and talks of Dune, moving, Dune 2 moving to 2024. It's and... not going to. It's not going to. Yeah, I, it's probably not at this point. Um, but, I mean, if it did, then the Marvels, it, it would still flop. 
you know, and even if it is an IMAX. So mm. I, I can totally see them spinning it and saying, well, it, it, the movie didn't do well because it released at the same time as Dune 2. We didn't get the IMAX screens. It, it's like giving them an excuse uh, because wasn't the Marvel supposed to drop in August or September originally? Wasn't it an earlier date originally? And then it got moved. Yeah, yeah. To yeah, it was supposed November to come out like 10th. next week or whatever it was. Yeah. 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 So they moved it to they moved it to that week. Or a few weeks you know, from now. Knowing that, well, I don't know if they moved it because I know Dune 2 originally was supposed to come out at the end of October. Uh, and then they moved it to early November. Uh, so I'm not sure if they moved the Marvels before or after that. But mm -hmm. if, if they moved it after Dune 2 moved their release date up to November 3rd, then at that point I see them do, making that move solely to put blame on Dune 2 being out at the same time and them not mm -hmm. getting IMAX screenings and making excuses for the for the film. Because why why else, why would you move it to a date when a movie like Dune 2 is coming out that you know is going to have a huge audience yeah, going true. out to see it? Well, they moved it like a week after a week after the release. Uh, they moved it to a week after the release of the new Hunger Games film as well. So they, they they're setting yeah. it up for excuses. We've said this before. Yeah, uh, they are just setting it up for excuses. But I just think it's hilarious those comments. Like, no, nah, there's no competition. <laughs> nah, we're committed. Doing part two, big yeah. money. What do we think, culture? <sighs> Dune will be fine. It's going to make a big chunk of money. It's not. It, it, that's going to be great. Shut up, man. Come on. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it, but I also recognize it's kind of a niche film because it yeah, truly yeah, it is. is it truly is hardcore sci-fi. And yeah. you don't have a whole lot of hardcore sci-fi out there. There's not uh, the only pull for women is going to be the 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 lady the lady guy there, uh, Chalamet, Chalamet Ding Dong or whatever the hell his name is. Anyway, um, that's definitely going to pull in the the females, but Aside from that, I mean, there's not there's not a whole lot of eye candy here for the dudes, so they're going to go strictly because they want to see the hardcore sci-fi. And yeah. it, it really does fit into a niche. And if you didn't really appreciate or see the first film, what's to compel you to see the second film? And so since we don't have viewership numbers for the day and date release of Dune 1, mm -hmm. we don't really know how many people saw it and what it actually set up as. We don't really we don't really know. Um, so my thoughts are it, that film will do fine. It'll perform well at the box office and it might inspire them to, you know, continue on with, with that franchise in some form or fashion. Mm. But regardless of whether or not this film is in competition with the Marvels, the Marvels is no prayer of performing. I don't care if it gets all the premium large format screens. It is it is one of those films that is the culmination of of all of the bad that Marvel's ever offered all at once. Mm. And it is the 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 front door swinging wide open to a force. And I think I've been on record saying that I'm like, this will yeah. essentially complete the circle of the new Avengers, which will all be chicks absent Spider-Man. Yeah, I agree with that. And then, you know, and then at that point you truly have the MCU, which has been the desire from the, you know, from the moment that Disney fully took over from Paramount. Mm. And now we're stuck, you know, and now we're stuck with, you know, a, another franchise that Disney has killed through their socio, uh, socio engineering program. And it, it, it's just gonna, it's just gonna be there in, well, in, in the numbers and it's going to perform mm. very poorly. I don't know how you can say otherwise, None of these shows or characters are popular. Is it? Yeah. Tom, you want to jump in on this, bud? Yeah, I mean, culture said most of it already, but yeah, like what at what point did anybody really think this was gonna be a successful movie? Uh Captain Marvel was a um stinker. Well, yeah, but I mean I'm I'm trying to think a fortified mess, I guess is the best way to put it, because they did make oh, sure yeah. they had a billion yeah, dollars. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm not so that. sure the Disney magic can make that happen again, especially after how poorly 
Miss Marvel played on Disney Plus, and I'm not talking about the quality of the show. I'm talking about mm. you know the actual viewership, um, and that's one of the reasons why they're showing it on television. But this move, I know Nick commented a little bit on that, is never really made sense to me at least how it's happened because they didn't move the happy meals they didn't move some of the other prom- promotional stuff the show is still going to be dropping on abc in the next two weeks here yeah it's it's just it's a death yeah. sentence they, they didn't move everything else they just moved the movie right it's really weird so like by the time this movie comes out it'll be so much in everybody's rearview mirror they'll be like oh didn't that movie come out like six months ago yeah so, I don't think anybody's going to care. And I've seen zero buzz, even from some of the Marvel drones and whatnot. They're kind of even just kind of meh on this one too. It seems like, I don't know. We'll see. I'm sure the Brie bots will be out in full force for it, but uh, until then, sure. (laughs) Until then, I think you're right. Like, I mean, why they just didn't leave it to come out now and get buried is beyond me. I mean, like they ever thought haunted mansion was going to do anything, especially moving Mm -hmm. it from October, which made no sense at all. Other than, this way, I guess at least they can get it out on video and on Disney Plus before October now, I guess. So what? Yes. So you sacrifice yeah. the movie for that? I mean. Super damn. Super damn. Wow. Thank you for your I mean, life. I honestly think, th- you want to know the truth of why I think they moved it in the first place beyond they needed to do some Go reshoots, on. which I think we heard about? Because I think they knew that Barbie was going to be a bigger deal than a lot of people initially uh, thought. Yeah. Because yeah, we true. we were starting to read the tea leaves and see that that thing was going to be massive. At true, least I true, did true. specifically. And I'm sure they're like they were probably like we want to steer steer clear of that because that's their audience, right? That's yeah. the exact audience they want for this mm. movie. Well, and that's also who they're going to be marketing to, right? We've had this conversation. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Don't be surprised. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. To, you know, it's funny you bring that up. Culture, watch the next set of trailers that come out for the Marvels. Be very female, pink very yeah girl powerly true. girls having a good time fucking centric i would not be the least well, bit surprised right let's 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 be fair that wasn't an original idea i had that was a a conversation that i had with wdw pro uh like day or so. oh i didn't even know that i didn't see the video yet but i yeah. uh, hearing that i'm i'm even more kind of convinced that that's probably yeah, what's gonna and happen I, and i i think that that disney also believes that's their win at least that's the way some mm-hmm. of the articles were looking at it as well as to go after a hardcore feminist messaging. Except my point is, and still then and now, and if you go watch the video, you know, you'll hear much more eloquence from it, but the, um, don't go now, stay here. But, uh, the, uh, the way that they're going to go about marketing it will be, um, 100 percent uh feminist they will be after after it in every sense of the imagination they they are going to they're going to try to um you know have their stars come out and talk about just how empowering it is uh yeah. it will become quite nauseating um you will you, you know you'll 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 know what you're in for if you didn't know already mm-hmm. but as i said then and this is the most important part of it they've already been doing that We've had Captain Marvel be a feminist nightmare, and I just said a word that you're not really supposed to say often on YouTube, but she's very, she's always been rather misandrous. She's always been rather disrespectful of males. She's, the, the mm-hmm. character is, it shows absolute disdain for her male counterparts, um, and, and if not indifference, and that's just, that's, the, that's her makeup, unfortunately. Anyway. Well, it'll be fascinating to see how how it all sort of comes together, but... Yeah.